His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree Number 24 of 2021, which amends Law Number 18 of 2017 on penalties and alternative measures. The horses of the Royal Endurance Team have passed the veterinary examination for the Endurance World Championship for young riders and juniors, which will be held in Armelo, Netherlands. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed confidence in the positive participation of the Royal Team in the championship. The veterinary examination was held in the championship village in a well-organized environment by the organizing committee and the International Federation for Equestrian Sports in the presence of the five Royal Team riders who will participate in the championship. Upon the directives and follow-up of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Royal Endurance Team continues its participation in the Endurance World Championship for young riders and juniors for 120 kilometers, which began today in Armelo, Netherlands, with a wide participation of riders from various countries. On this occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser congratulated the Emirati team on winning first and second places and the Tunisian teams on winning third place. On the occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed that the participation of five Bahraini riders in the championship is a source of pride, especially following the qualification of many riders and horses to the championship. His Highness stated that many goals of the royal team's participation in the championship are sports, economic and promotional in accordance with Bahrain's economic vision of 2030. His Highness expressed appreciation for the efforts of the participating riders and the technical and administrative bodies during the previous stage. The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, the SCYS, president of the General Sports Authority, the GSA, and president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, the BOC, is Hanish Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, visited Rafa Bahrain Golf, Isa Town, and Al Khaldia Clubs. His Highness met with the president of Rafa Club, Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa, the president of Bahrain Golf Club, Hamad Salim Al Adham, the president of Isa Town Club, Isa Al Akbari, and the president of Al Khaldia Club, Mahmoud. Janahi, as well as members of the clubs in the presence of the GSA Vice President, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and GSA CEO Dr. Abdurrahman Sadiq Askar. His Highness valued the efforts of the clubs in implementing activities and participating in competitions, as well as embracing the Bahraini youth in their sports teams. His Highness Sheikh Khalid listened to briefings on the future plans of the clubs that aim to achieve extraordinary results and maintain the efforts towards upgrading the technical and administrative staff to develop the sports field in Bahrain. His Highness expressed appreciation for the contributions of the clubs that serve sports in Bahrain, adding that they are a main partner in developing the sector. He also expressed keenness to support them in order to sustain their operations at the administrative and sports levels. From their part, the presidents of the clubs expressed gratitude and appreciation to His Highness for his endless support and efforts which have a positive impact on the development of the Bahraini youth and sports movement. They added that this reflects His Highness's interest and keenness to support all efforts that aim to achieve comprehensive development in the sports field.
the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawzia Zainal, participated in a meeting organized by the Inter-Parliamentary Union, the International Atomic Energy Agency, and the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization. She affirmed Bahrain's keenness on fulfilling all its obligations stipulated in international agreements related to the field of nuclear security and on supporting all efforts made by the International Atomic Energy Agency in the field of consolidating the principles of peaceful use of nuclear energy in a manner that maintains the stability and security of the region and the world at large. Zaina noted that Bahrain has enough legislation and specialized committees to take the lead in the field of peaceful uses of nuclear energy, stressing its keenness on ensuring a safe environment from nuclear dangers. Zainal also made a statement to call for legislation to combat terrorism and to call on parliaments to take an active role in this regard. She stated that the kingdom, under the leadership of His Majesty the King, is working on legislation against extremism, hate speech and contempt for religions while protecting tolerance and peace. She presented Bahrain's experience in the field of combating terrorism and urged parliaments to engage in dialogue on the matter. The speaker also held a number of meetings held on the sidelines of the conference where she met with Arab Parliament Speaker Adil bin Abdurrahman al-Asumi, hailing the Parliament's efforts to promote the Arab legislative work. She also met with the Speaker of the Bangladeshi Parliament, Shirin Sherman Chaudhuri, and discussed with her bilateral relations and cooperation. During her meeting with the Deputy Speaker of Pakistan's National Assembly, Qasim Khan Suri, Zainal highlighted the strong Bahraini-Pakistani relations and the growing cooperation in various fields. The Representatives Council Speaker also held meetings with the Speaker of the Bosnian House of Representatives, Denis Vidic, and the Speaker of the Italian Lower House of Parliament, Roberto Fico. Bahrain's delegation of the Parliamentary Division concluded its participation in the work of the 5th World Conference of Speakers of Parliament held in Vienna in the presence of the Secretary-General of the United Nations. Moreover, more over 110 heads of Parliament and 115 parliamentary delegations from various world countries. During its participation, the delegation of the Parliamentary Division stated that during the conference, five interactive discussions were held between parliamentary leaders on the topic of Parliament leadership for more effective pluralism that achieves peace and sustainable development for people and the planet, during which interactive public discussions were held and reports emanating from the panel discussions were submitted and the conference concluded with the adoption of its final declaration. The Representatives Council Speaker also met with the President of the National Council of Austria, Wolfgang Spotka, on the sidelines of the conference. The Speaker discussed with the Austrian National Council President a number of joint topics of issues and issues hailing the deep-rooted relations between Bahrain and Austria and the level of cooperation and coordination in various fields. She affirmed that Bahrain's parliamentary diplomacy is witnessing continuous growth and development, which stems from its keenness on building strong parliamentary ties with the parliaments. During the meeting, the exemption of passport holders in Bahrain from visa to Austria was discussed and Wolfgang Spotka showed the desire to organize bilateral talks during the coming period to reach agreements that will enhance cooperation. For his part, Wolfgang Spotka commended the steps and procedures that Bahrain has taken to face the coronavirus pandemic and the initiatives that included the continuity of development operations. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, held a joint press conference with U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd James Austin III on the sidelines of his visit to Bahrain. The U.S. Defense Secretary had held meetings with His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The two sides discussed the developments unfolding in Afghanistan and their potential spillover on regional security and stability. Austin III stressed his country's appreciation for Bahrain's support to humanitarian efforts to evacuate people who transited the kingdom before heading to the United States, which showed the importance of joint cooperation between the two countries. The two sides also reiterated the importance of their strategic cooperation, particularly in the defense, military and humanitarian fields, noting the two countries' role in supporting peace, security and stability in the Arabian Gulf region and the Middle East. The U.S. Defense Secretary also congratulated His Majesty the King on signing the Abraham 
and peace accords, stressing the importance of the agreement in supporting regional peace and stability. The two sides also discussed the importance of building on these agreements to further dialogue and coexistence in the region, stressing the importance of Middle East peace and stability for the international security. Austin III extended thanks to His Majesty the King and to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for Bahrain's support of the evacuation operations from Afghanistan. He stressed solid bilateral relations and stressed his keen interest in further strengthening defense partnership, reiterating thanks to Bahrain for hosting the U.S. forces. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, met in Cairo today with his Sudanese counterpart, Dr. Maryam Sadiq Al Mahdi, on the sidelines of the ministerial level meeting of the Arab League Council in its 156th regular session. During the meeting, they reviewed the strong, broadly relations between Bahrain and Sudan and means to enhance bilateral cooperation in various fields and coordination on various issues of common interest to achieve the aspirations of the two broadly countries and people. They also discussed means of enhancing joint Arab action and the latest regional and international developments and issues of common concern. The meeting was attended by the Bahraini ambassador to Egypt and permanent representative to the Arab League, Hisham bin Mohammed al joder and the delegation accompanying the minister. Meanwhile, the Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, Assam Khalaf, attended the 24th Conference for Municipal Affairs in the GCC, where he affirmed that the event is carrying on the work of sustainable development in the interest of the citizens of the Gulf. The meeting discussed joint municipal work, including the award for the best practices in waste management and recycling. The Minister affirmed the importance of such joint work and said that the Kingdom is preparing publications and studies on its applications. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,153,858 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,094,977 had taken the second and 265,192 had taken the booster dose. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 979 with 102 recoveries, 114 registered new cases and no deaths. 66 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 36 are contacts of active cases and 12 are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus. <laughs> 